making a Stuart model steam plant part 70, machining a special adapter to connect the exhaust piping from the Stuart S50 steam engine to the condenser. Before that though, a bit more test running, with £50 per square inch showing on the gauge on the boiler. All I have to do is open the steam valves to let the compressed air into the respective engines. I'm going to start with the double 10 V. After plenty of work on this engine, it seems to be running OK in both directions. When I open the valve to the S50 steam engine, this is what happens. It throws out a lot of water and oil. Not a big problem, it's simple to wipe it away, and before I paint these parts, I'll be degreasing them anyway. In this clip, I've put a cloth in front of the condenser to catch any oil droplets. When I apply some pressure with my hand to the flywheels, I can feel that both of the engines are quite powerful. I need to make an exhaust pipe that goes from the outlet of the S50's exhaust on top of the cylinder, which of course is a check valve without a ball in it, to the condenser. And to do this, as before, I need a pipe bender. The microcosm pipe bender is far too small. I need to use a different one. This one, in fact. I'm going to make the exhaust pipe from this engine using 3 16ths of an inch diameter copper pipe. And here I'm making the first bend of the copper pipe. If you've been watching this series, you will know that I tried 3 16ths diameter pipe on the Stuart 10V, but it was too small a bore to clear the volume of air coming from two cylinders. The Stuart S50 only has one 5 8 of an inch diameter bore cylinder and 5 16 pipe will be fine for this sort of volume. Using a check valve of the size suitable for 3 16 of an inch diameter pipe would be very overscale, so I'm going to make an adapter to fit onto the quarter by 40 thread of the check valve that I've fitted as an exhaust manifold. Over now to my Boxford lathe, and I'm using a commercial union adapter screwed into a union nut which is held in the chuck. It's not a brilliant idea to make an adapter like this which has a 5 16 by 32 thread on the outside because once I drill it 5 30 seconds of an inch to thread quarter by 40 on the inside the fitting is not going to be very strong. That's why I'm completely turning away one half of the adapter. Then I will thread the middle part, the larger hexagon shaped bit, using a quarter by 40 threads per inch tap and this should be more than strong enough to screw onto the quarter by 40 thread on the exhaust fitting. The rings that you can see on the work is just bad workmanship. I withdrew the cutting tool just a little bit too fast, but don't worry, it will look fine when it's all finished. In this clip I'm threading the hole in the adapter using a quarter by 40 plug tap and rotating the chuck by hand. Once I'd done that, using my Barco spanner, I unscrewed the fitting from the union nut that was held in the chuck. Here's the finished adapter, it just needs a bit of a clean up, after which I'm screwing it into place using some Loctite 542. This small check valve is not very strong, so it's important not to over tighten the adapter. I'm making the exhaust pipe in a slightly different way. What I've done is bent one end of the pipe and silver soldered a union cone onto it and here I'm tightening the union nut in place on the condenser. Once I bent the other end of the pipe to line up with the exhaust outlet then I silver soldered a union cone on that and fitted a 5 16 by 32 union nut. This clip shows the finished exhaust pipe from the S50 steam engine to the condenser. Once I dismantle all the piping, put it in the acid bath to clean it up, I will then line up everything. It's pointless doing it now, this will be done when I finish the piping. Time for a bit more test running. Sometimes I get comments from people telling me that the engines are running far too fast. Steam engines run much slower than this. Well I'm really sorry to inform you that you are misguided. I agree that the very large pumping engines do run slowly, they are huge great things, but these are models of quite small engines. 
For instance, the Stuart Double Ten V is often used as a marine engine, and if you look at a full-size steamboat, you will notice that the engine is running quite fast. And then again, if you look at a traction engine when it's on the road, the motion is a blur. So all this thing about steam engines running slowly is utter nonsense. It depends on the scale of the model. If this is a model of a very large engine, yes it would run slow, but both of these are models of small engines, so they run faster. To finish, I'm lifting the baseboard off the bench and you can hear how the tone changes. My entire bench functions as a soundboard, but so does the baseboard. As I lift the baseboard, the vibration frequency is just higher. And that is it for this video. I'd like to say, as I always do, stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.